You're listening to Crow Talk, a ministry of Fifty Shades of Grace. Everybody's got a story. I'm guessing like me, you've been hurt before. But what if I told you there was more to this life than being stuck in the hurt and sin of your past? Hey, we all have crud, but it's how we deal with it that makes all the difference. Today's episode is brought to you by a generous sponsor just like you. We thank you for your gift, which allows us to share hope and continue to help people deal with the crud in their lives. So thank you. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Crud Talk. I'm Sonia Bruner. How is your week going? I pray that it's been a blessing for you and that you are just understanding that you got to deal with your crud because if you don't deal with your crud, it's going to deal with you. Oh my goodness, I have something to tell you guys. Something really crazy happened to me this weekend while I was at a show. I was selling my Threads of Hope shirts. And if you don't know what those are, one of the cool things about those Threads of Hope flannel shirts is how they go with my story. They've they're kind of given away, right? They're thrown out. Nobody wants them. I get them from Goodwill. I get them donated to me. But basically, nobody wants them anymore. They're worthless. And that's how I felt as a kid going through all the hurt and the abuse. So if I take something that's worthless and I make it beautiful, that's what Jesus does for us. I call them threads of hope. Pretty cool that Jesus gave that to me. I love it. So I'm at the show. People are buying my shirts. People love the flannel shirts, people. I mean, you do not get in the way of a woman in her flannels. I'm telling you right now. And you have to hear the story, right? So like, it totally makes a difference when you hear it. Otherwise, it's just a shirt. And oh, I had a helper with me in the booth. A big shout out to Michaela. Woo, woo. She was helping me. Teenage girl from church. Awesome. She was such a great worker too. She's so fun. And as people would come up to my booth, I'd ask them, hey, have you heard my story? And most people will say, well, no, what's your story? Or tell me about it. So these two ladies came up to my booth and I, and I said, hey, have you heard my story? And they were like, no, we haven't. So I say, I'm a human traffic survivor and I was bought and sold to men for sex. And before I could go on to explain the story of my flannel shirts, one lady says, how much did they make off you? And I'm like, what? And she said, how much did they, how much money did they make off you? And then cackled, literally like a full blown evil mean lady, like a cackle, like a witch. I stood there, I, I have no idea what my expression was, but my brain couldn't compute why she would say something so mean. I think I maybe looked at my shirts, I kind of turned my head and then said something like, that's not funny. And she said, well, I ain't got no man. That's one way to get a man. Then laughed hysterically and walked away. In that moment, I want you to know, I had no shortage of words. (laughs) I never have a shortage of words. What was interesting to me, though, was how the Holy Spirit kept me from jumping over the table and knocking her teeth out. It was like the Holy Spirit grabbed me by the shoulders and shook me because I realized, oh my goodness, I have a teenager who's standing there with me. She's totally shocked witnessing this entire thing. And as crazy mind-blowing as it was for anyone to say what she said, I am so thankful that Michaela was there because I think that helped me not to say anything that I would have to ask for forgiveness for later. You know what I mean? I was hacked off. I was ticked because I have a button. You know what I mean? (laughs) They say, don't push people's buttons. Well, mine is bullies. I have a bully button. (laughs) For real. It's my deal. I can't handle bullies. What happened with this mean lady at the craft show reminded me about one of the worst letters I ever got from one of my bullies. Listen to this. Sonia, you probably don't remember me, but you and I went to the same church for several years. I couldn't stand you. You were always smiling, always singing. You were loud. I remember thinking, what is this girl's problem? Nobody is that into Jesus. It has to be fake. She said, I was obnoxious and I didn't have any respect for how you're supposed to act in church. She talked about how her and her friends would laugh at me and talk about how obnoxious I was and how pathetic I was. 
They'd laugh about how ridiculously fat I was and couldn't understand why I wasn't more ashamed to be out in front of everyone because of how I looked. She actually got angry because no matter what happened or what was said to me, it never broke me. She says, Sonia, you had nothing to feel confident about. You were nothing special. I saw a chip in your armor And that drove me to continue to try to knock you off your pedestal. Knowing that you could be hurt became a game to me and my friends, all in the name of setting you on the path to humility and true Christian living. She says, I couldn't understand where that confidence came from. Like, you didn't deserve to be confident. I had the godly husband. I had the wonderful kids. I grew up in the church and I lived right. And you were an embarrassment to the church and to God. I was a leader and respected by many in the church. I taught a Bible study. She even says, I remember seeing your husband and feeling sorry for him having to be married to you. I was a lady. You had no clue what that was. People thought you were fun, but life isn't all about fun and games. You weren't that great. So why didn't you care that you weren't that great? I always wondered, why you were okay with yourself. I never felt okay with myself. So fast forward now, you guys, several years to to like right now. Her and her husband, they teach an adult Sunday school class. Listen to what she says. Oh my gosh. One of the couples, she says, one of the couples starts to tell us about some marriage issues that they've been working on. They tell us about a ministry and this woman who sings and shares her story of being abused and sold for sex. This couple is telling us some of the things that they've learned through this ministry. And the whole class is really moved by their confession. And so my husband asked them, hey, will you pull up the website? So as the website comes up and the video begins, I hear your voice and I see you on the screen sharing your story and I am shocked. I can feel the blood draining from my face. We listen as a class to the whole thing and I'm sitting there feeling sick. Sonia, I knew that you had a rough childhood, but I never knew your story. In that moment, I'm overcome with shame. She says she has to leave the class because she's feeling so horrible. She tells me that she went to my website. She read all my articles. She watched every video. She even went to my early version of Crud Talk, which kind of started, some of you don't know this, but Crud Talk started in 2018 and it started out as a video podcast. So she was even looking at those, right? She says, I thought I was better than you. I was a lady. You were not. I was the true Christian. You had no idea what that meant, or so I thought. I am so ashamed of myself, Sonia. I had the audacity to question your Christianity when I was acting like Satan himself. Oh Oh my goodness, she says she was jealous and that she hated me. She actually admitted that. She said she wanted me to feel less than. She said she tried to make me feel like I wasn't loved or accepted. She asked me to please forgive her for everything that she ever did or said. And she says, I was in sin. The worst kind of sin, listen to this, is to try to take away what God has already freely given. That's powerful, y'all. The worst kind of sin is to try to take away from someone what God has already freely given. Mm. She said, you were sharing the joy that Jesus has given you. You couldn't help it. Your confidence was because of your relationship with Jesus. I didn't have that kind of relationship, but you did. You made people feel good and you gave them permission to express their joy in the Lord. I didn't have that. You love people even when you had more of a reason to not love people because of what they did to you. You weren't thinking you were better. You just, listen to this, you just believed what Jesus told you and lived like it. On the contrary, Sonia, you felt lower than anyone, but you knew that Jesus loved you. You knew it, and no one could take that away from you. I tried to take that away from you, and to me, that is the worst thing a person who claims to know and love Jesus can do to another human being. I was no better than your mother who hurt you or the men that tortured you. I tortured you on purpose all because I was jealous, all because I couldn't stand who I was and didn't want anyone that I thought was less than me to feel good about themselves. I was a bully, a Christian bully. Y'all, can you believe that? <laughs> I can't. 
bullying is not just a kid thing it's a human being thing because hurting people hurt people y'all i could do two to three episodes episodes just on that letter right oh my word it's like where do i start the hatred the jealousy the desire to see someone hurting and failing adults making fun of someone because of their joy their confidence how they look what for real y'all that's messed up i don't know why but girls i mean women can be the meanest nastiest creatures on this earth they will smile to your face and the minute your back is turned they will cut you to smithereens with their tongue while saying bless your heart you know what i'm saying there's there's many of you because i hear from you that have been bullied in your life you need to know what they said and did it hurt me but no matter what they said i had god's word to compare it to god has never said hurtful things to me never he'll convict me of sin sure but he doesn't say mean or ugly things a person who follows jesus should never say hurtful things or call a person names ever but i want to jump to the truth here i was loud (laughs) you guys i was loud i was always smiling i was always singing it's how i expressed my emotions i was always trying to make people laugh i pushed towards the the the, the silly things in my life because i needed to laugh you get that right i didn't understand religion i didn't i was never religious i didn't understand it that's because all i had was a relationship with jesus everybody listen to me the first thing i ever learned as a christian was how much jesus loved me not the bible verses or the stories even though i devoured the word of god to learn more and more and more and more the very first thing i learned at a gut level was that jesus loves me and wants me no i didn't know how to act in church it's true i didn't know anything other than to just be nice to serve and encourage others and here's the thing i didn't even know that i was confident i didn't try to be confident i was who i was because jesus loved me and that gave me confidence to be worthy to be in the world like everybody else remember where i came from jesus's love changed everything in my life i wasn't better than anyone but i wasn't worse either why do i share this story with you Number one, if you have been hurt by someone's words, you must not let that man or that mean girl in a letter or two ladies at your booth, (laughs) you must not let what they say to you to become your truth. Jesus is the truth. What he says is the truth. Number two, if you are going to profess to be a Christian, then act like one. Do not hurt people. Hurting someone isn't loving them. As Christians, we are to love. As much as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. You can't control what others do, but you can control how you respond. You've heard me say that so many times. When you do hurt someone, notice that I said when. Go to them and make it right and ask them to forgive you. I wanted to get mad and feel a sense of vindication. I wanted that so bad. But the truth is, I've hurt people in my life and you've hurt people the moment we realize that we've hurt people that we've hurt someone we need to go to them and make it right it's never okay to hurt anyone bullies hurt people on purpose just because they can jesus knew all about being bullied he was innocent and people hurt him we all hurt him with our sin we're all bullies do you get that have you hurt someone with your words we as women and men too need to realize that we stand before a generation that needs us to lead to be the example of what grace and truth truly is in a life that's changed by jesus christ did you hear me we you and i need to lead by example for the next generation to see what grace and truth looks like in a life that's changed by jesus if we gossip or tear each other down what message are we sending are we jealous of some other woman are we jealous of some other man does she have more than us does he 
Is she prettier? Is he wealthier? Is she wiser? Are they better than us? Y'all, we need to stand. All of us are holding, standing there with two buckets in our hands. One is filled with gasoline and one is filled with water. As a Jesus girl, I'm going to talk about myself right here. As a Jesus girl who has been forgiven by Jesus Christ and changed, which bucket you pour out will make all the difference. You have the power to choose to use both for good. One can put out the fires that seek to divide and destroy and discourage, and the other can be used to fuel the flames of life by encouraging or standing on the truth, by fanning the flames of revival, by allowing us to encourage one another in our calling for the kingdom of God. Do you understand that if you pour the wrong bucket on something, you are responsible for burning everything in its path? I knew that they didn't like me or accept me. I always felt that. But to hear her words so brutally honest cut me deep. I thought she was super brave to share what she did. That takes guts to admit that out loud in a letter. You know what I'm saying? That takes guts to admit that. But it did hurt me. Let me just say right here, stop the gossip. Don't participate and don't allow it in your presence ever. It is sin, period. And I get it. I think all of us struggle with this. A person or situation can be brought up and just like that, we're we're engaged in a conversation about someone that we shouldn't be. We're gossiping. That's wrong. It's sin. If you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. In other words, shut your mouth. If you are speaking negatively about someone else, at all if you're doing that stop it repent go make it right and don't do it again hurting people hurt people what's going on with you that you have to hurt others with your words just because you're hurt doesn't give you the right to hurt others get the log out of your own eye and quit being so judgmental and critical it's mean You are no better than anyone else, but you're not worse either. If you have to point out everyone else's sins, you are deflecting the attention off of yourself, probably crossing your fingers and hoping that no one will see what a mess you are. Knock it off. Put your big girl panties on and be nice. Always. (laughs) Choose to speak life and not death. Words are powerful. Girls, I'm going to talk to you. You can speak life into the lives of other women or you can tear them apart just simply because you can. Not everyone knows how to act in church or how to dress in church. But I guarantee you, if you are speaking in a mean or ugly way about someone else, you have no idea how to act in church either. God forgive us. When she said the worst kind of sin is to try to take away what God has already freely given. God forgive us if we've done that to others. Let's make a choice now to never do that to another person. If you've been bullied, if you've been struggling with someone being mean to you, I would give it all to Jesus because what they say is not true about who you are. Believe him, trust him. And when you're ready, forgive them. Because hurting people hurt people. For more information, you can go to sonyabrunner.com. I have lots of information on there. If you'd like information on how to sponsor this podcast, I would love to visit with you about that. If you're struggling with some crud, I can help with that too. Go to my website. I'm Sonya Bruner. This is Crud Talk. See you next time.